a monthly program of the Caribbean Examinations Council. I am your host, Cleveland Sam. My guest today is Mr. Glenroy Kamabach, the Registrar of the Caribbean Examinations Council. We have been hearing a lot about rethinking the education system in the region and reconceptualization of how education should be. Registrar, in your view, what would you say are some of the defining characteristics of the Caribbean education system? Thanks, Cleveland, and good morning, everyone. The Caribbean education system is based off an education act that was back in the 1930s, 1940s, which defined education into specific areas, primary, elementary school education, grammar school education, and technical vocational education. And out of that, the most important parts for the elementary type education was reading, writing, and arithmetic. And as a matter of fact, the whole concept of literacy was based on the ability to be able to read and write in order to be determined literate. That has worked well for us in the past. And our whole education system, our classroom arrangement, our timetabling, everything was based on ensuring that maximum time was given to um, arithmetic, to reading, to comprehension, to writing, and so on. There seemed to be, some people did very well under that system, but the majority of people didn't do as well. So this was meant to take care of the needs of the plantation as we were living in that Every, time. The plantation, the factories, the kind of industries that operated in, and it is important to recognize that education has a really dual purpose. It is for social development as well as economic development. So if we are going to be having a lot of agriculture, lots of factories, lots of manufacturing, then the education system would be built in a way to provide the workforce for those um, particular industries. Yeah, but so we it have was sufficient to, have, to know how to read, how to write, and how to calculate, and so on. I believe also, uh, when I think about it, that the unitary method was, was, was very much in that. If one thing caused this, somebody with that cause, and, right. and, those, and those kind of things were, were very useful in helping us calculate. And, um, things that uh, we need to buy or hold out. To. I've moved a long way from there now and as the leader of the region's own examination board, what is your view on the current conceptualization of what education should be? Well, we have focused a lot now on the 21st century skills, communication, collaboration, critical thinking and uh, creativity. Those are some of the things that we put a lot of emphasis on. And if we're going to put emphasis on that, the question is the structure that we have now. Is that capable of making the change and embracing so much more people, so many more people than, than we need? Um, we used to be very well of criminal off the crop and putting them into industries and so on, but what happens now? Everybody is needed for the service industries that are in the Caribbean. Yeah. It isn't um, just enough to say 20% can go on and provide the resources that we need, the human resources that we need. We need everybody on board to facilitate the, the service industries. So we need now to think about universal um, secondary education, universal primary education, and those concepts are well accepted in the region, and many countries have gone towards universal secondary education, but we still stick to the kind of qualifications that we had in the past, the erstwhile more levels and A levels as the significant markers for a person's achievement in the secondary school. Um, and mainly those are based on memory and, and the, the linguistic skills, demonstrating through the, your linguistic skills what you know, what you can do, or what you understand. So that, that needs to change, and what the education needs to be more directed towards the 21st century skills, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking and creativity. Right. And what is CXC doing to facilitate this change? Well, CXC has for a while redirected its services to include problem-based and project-based learning, uh, encouraging group work, encouraging creativity, inviting students to come up with um, topics and ideas in our primary program, CPA. The students develop their projects themselves. They identify what they want to research, how they want to find what, <coughs> the method they want to use to find out more. And then they present these things in some interesting ways, uh, working as a group. So the collaboration comes about, the creativity comes about, the ownership of the task comes about. And um, that is how we, we are looking for people to operate in workplaces and in um, institutions over the over this period, to collaborate together, to solve problems, to try to share what they know with one another. And if you look at some of the research that is being done, people doing research on cancer, 
many different companies or many different agencies share information with one another rather than trying to race to see who gets there first. They share what they have so that they can find a cure much faster than if you individually train. So if students can work together, it is a learning process. Knowledge is gained through social interaction. Right. When you sit down, you talk together and you share, I hear what you know, you hear what I know. We're learning together, we're improving, and by the end of that time, we can do something that is better than either one of us could have done by ourselves. Right, and is this the thinking behind the new generation subjects that we are doing now? This is the thinking behind the new generation subjects to, one, to ensure that students have the, the skill and the knowledge to get into employment themselves rather than waiting for, for persons to employ them, as well as sharing their knowledge and building new knowledge for which they can patent and, and copyright and so on when they're conducting their studies. And we have even a newer subject coming up very soon, um, design and technology, where we're encouraging persons to look into their various environments in, at home, at school, at play, identify problems, develop ideas to see how they can solve this problem, build out the problem, and then get a prototype to say, well, look, this, this is how we think this thing will work, and this is how we, we can solve this particular problem that exists. So it is utilizing knowledge from chemistry, from physics, from science, from maths, from all the other areas, but the focus is more on trying to, to be creative in finding solutions for, uh, for a problem, more problem-based learning kind of approach. Thank you very much, Registrar, for uh, your views this morning. You have just been watching the first issue of Let's Talk, a monthly program of the Caribbean Examinations Council. I am Cleveland Sam. Thank you for watching.